Good morning. Um, this morning I'm going to be reading from John chapter 1. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. <clears throat> he was with God in the beginning. Though Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him, the world was made through him. The world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who ha did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become his children of God. <sighs> children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The world became flesh, the word became flesh, and, the, and was made, he, made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory and the glory of the only, uh, one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of the fullness we have all received grace in the place of grace already given. <clears throat> For the law was given through Moses, and grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the only, the one and only Son, who He Himself, is, um, God, and His His closest relationship with the Father has made Him known. Amen. Hello, church family. Y'all doing all right this morning? Y'all will have to excuse me a little bit. Uh, Christmas presents were given a little bit early this morning. Uh, or not this morning, but this week. My kids have given me a little bit of a runny nose and a cold. So I have a scratchy throat. Um, I don't know if that makes me a good dad or a bad dad for blaming them. But uh, anyways, a little bit of a scratchy throat. So I got a cough drop in my mouth this morning. So if I sound like I've got a little bit of a lisp. That's why. So I apologize for that. How many enjoyed yesterday? You know why you enjoyed yesterday? I know why I didn't enjoy yesterday. It was the longest, darkest day of the year. You guys like the darkness, the rain? S some of you are weird. There's a couple hands that went up. Don't get me wrong. I, <clears throat> I love a, a rainy day where you can sit next to a fire and read a book or just hang out and chill, but I don't like it day after day after day, right? And yesterday was the darkest day of the year, right? It's, it's oftentimes what people refer to as the winter solstice is now here, right? The, the sun, or the earth rather, is the farthest away from the sun in its orbit around the sun, and then it starts to make its transition back around so it's close and we have summer again, right? And that's what we're ready for, is summer. People have been celebrating the winter solstice for years. And as they've celebrated it, I think sometimes that they have misunderstood it. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14, if you didn't know this, and if you uh, put your eyes up on it, it says that when God created the lights, right? He created the sun and he created the moon. He says that I will give it to them as signs... And for seasons. Have you ever stopped to think about that? For signs and for seasons. When we have the darkest day of the year, the very thing that happens the very next day is the sign that we have. Light wins over darkness. Amen? Light overcomes the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome the light. If we were to turn off all the lights in here, it would become dark. But as soon as we turn on the light, what happens? The light chases the darkness away. The light overcomes the darkness. 
Darkness can never cover up light. Light exposes the darkness and chases it away. And when the sun is far, I'm sorry, when the earth is farthest away from the sun and we have the darkest day, there is a promise from God that is there. That though you see dark days in your life, there is light that is still coming. Amen? That there is new life that is now coming. It represents the cycles of life. Colossians tells us that all things were made through Jesus, by Jesus, and for Jesus to glorify Him. That's what the Father wants. In John chapter 1, the scripture that was read uh, just a few minutes ago, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And it says that this Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That flesh that came and dwelt among us is Jesus Christ. It is God through whom all things have been made and was made was through Jesus. And it says nothing that was made, not anything that was made was made apart from being made in Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world. Amen. And John bears witness about this and says this great light has come into the world so that we won't have to walk in Darkness. What is the darkness that you and I walk in? What is the darkness that we see in the world around us? We call it sin. We call it evil. We call it wickedness. But really, it's selfishness. It's pride. It's our egos. It's our self centeredness. It's our hate. It's our slander. It's our unrighteous anger. It's our unrighteous jealousy. It is our gossip. It is all the ways in which we destroy the relationship between you and I and between God. God has created mankind in His image. You bear the image of the glorious God of heaven. And scripture bears witness that he created this world. And as he created it, the crown of his creation was man and woman. And he placed them in a garden. And he said in this great world that he had made, he said, it is very good. But there's also something else that God gave us. God gave us humanity. He gave us dominion over this world. God says, let us make man in our image and let us give him dominion over the birds of the air and the beasts of the fields and over the land and over the sea. Let us give him dominion. God handed the world to us. He handed it to us. You know what that means? That we are a ruler, right? An under ruler of this world that God has given us. He handed it to us to do with it as we please, to make the world as we saw fit, to make the world as we wanted to. And what did we do? We have made the world exactly as we wanted to. A lot of people lay the blame at God's feet for all the atrocities that happened in the world. It's not God's fault. God's not the one that's making us go to war, is he? God's not the one that's making us greedy for gain where we're robbing from the poor and making the rich richer and the poor poor. It's not God who is causing us to murder our neighbor, is it? It's not God who is causing us to slander and to gossip about our neighbor. It's not God who has caused us to raise up our hands and our fists and to hit our fellow man. It's us. It's right here. This is the world that we make. So when we talk about brokenness in the world and we talk about suffering in the world and we talk about the pain that is in the world and we talk about the atrocities that are happening and have happened in the world, we cannot, we must not lay that at God's feet. It's not His fault. He gave us a world that was free of sin, that was free of suffering, that was free of all the heartache that we experience. 
of all the loneliness and the doubts and the fears, he gave us a world and said, here, this is a very good world. You can have dominion over it. But there's one thing I don't want you to do. Do not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And we debate back and forth about what this knowledge of good and evil is. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the temptation and the sin that was there is that we would become our own gods. That was the temptation that Satan posed to Eve. In the day that you eat of this tree, you will not die, but that you will become like God. Forgetting what God had already said. I will make man in my image. We were already created in the image of God. We were already fashioned and formed by his love and his mercy and his grace and his hope. We were already created in his likeness. But the temptation was that we could have more, that we could be more. And what happens when we give in to that greediness and that that lust that lives within us to have more, to, to reach our hands out and to just pull more and more in so that we can have more and have more. What has it caused us to do? To fight. In chapter 4, after Adam and Eve, in chapter 3, sin, we read about two brothers, two of the first brothers, Cain and Abel. What happens with Cain and Abel? They become jealous of each other, right? Or more so Cain against Abel. And he's jealous because God approves of Abel because Abel isn't like Cain. Cain wants to do things, right? There's some grounds that we can look at there. But Cain doesn't have the same kind of heart that Abel does. Abel seems to be more kind, to be more honest and forthright with God. And because God approved of Abel, what did Cain do? He killed his brother. He's the first murderer. The first murderer. And it didn't take very long to get there, did it? Adam and Eve, and they had some children. And then there's Cain and Abel. From Adam and Eve, and Cain kills Abel. This is the world that you and I have made, right? This is the world that humanity has made. What is broken in this world It's what we have broken. What Jesus does is he brings life to us. He brings life to us and breathes new life in us and says, I want you to live. I don't want you to die. I don't want you to live in darkness. I want you to thrive and to survive. That's what I have created you for. I have created you for glory. I have created you for a different kind of life. And that's why Jesus became flesh. To share in all of our weaknesses. To share in all of our emotions. And to share in the same kind of life that you and I have. But while doing so, he also gave us the example of how we are to live. Amen? The light that Jesus brings us is about how to love God and how to love one another the way we're supposed to. What would happen in this world right now if everyone said, okay, I am going to love my neighbor as myself? What would happen today if the world decided to love their neighbor as their self like Jesus said? Would we have a different world? It is the highest ethical standard that anyone could ever conceive of. It's called the golden rule. What is good for me is good for my neighbor. Loving him as myself. That means if I don't like it and I don't want it done to me, then I don't do it to my neighbor. Right. And if I think it's good for me and I think it's right for me, then it's also got to be good for my neighbor. John, in writing his gospel, he says in verse 4, In him, in Jesus, was life. 
And the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has never overcome it. Jesus has been changing the world since he came into it. And what he has been doing is he has been winning victory after victory after victory after victory. Because as each person becomes converted to Jesus, they make a commitment to not live the way that the world lives. Amen? They make a commitment to love their neighbor as their self. This is the light of men. It's the way that God has called us to love one another. When he gave us dominion, he said, here's the world. You have dominion over it. And we said, but we want to be gods. We want more. And when we reached out and we tried to snatch more, we just have been spiraling and spiraling and spiraling into sin and more destruction and more destruction and more destruction. And all the while, Scripture tells us, God says, don't do that. That's not building a society that is righteous. It's not building a society that's glorious. You're hurting each other. You're using each other. You're oppressing each other. He says, repent. Turn back to me. Come back to me. Listen to me. Learn from me. Learn from me because my way is a light burden to bear. My yoke is easy and my burden is easy to bear. Because we're loving one another. It's different than the way that the world behaves. Because the world behaves in darkness. It behaves in darkness and it teaches us to continue to perpetuate darkness. And we will continue to perpetuate darkness if we continue to live for ourselves and to live of our own accord. Since the world has began, mankind has not found the answer to the darkness that is in his heart of his own. Society's search What is a high ethical standard? What is a philosophy that we should live by? What kind of world can we create? And every single time, as human beings on our own, we fail. And we fail, and we fail, and we fail. Look at history. I challenge you, look look at all of history. And all of history repeats itself with the tragedies of the sin and murder and hatred And immorality continuously. It's Jesus who has given us life. He has given us the light by which we are to live by. The light that makes a difference in our lives. And it's the light that makes a difference in the world. We shine the light of Jesus in our lives when we decide that we are going to live in accordance with his teachings and love our neighbors as ourselves. And when we do that, just like if we turn the lights off in here, we turn the lights back on, it chases the darkness away. And so no matter how small you think that your light is, or no matter how small you think that your obedience in Jesus is to loving your neighbor, no matter how difficult it is to love him, you are shining a light. And that light is chasing away darkness that sometimes you can't see because it's not this kind of light that you turn on, but it's the light of love. It is the light of of God's grace that shines into our lives. It is the light of God's grace that shines into this world and fills us with hope. And it fills us with good intentions. John says that when Jesus came in verse 6 and following, it says he came to his own. He came to his own kind. He came to the Jews. And it says that they rejected him. They rejected him even though he looked like them, walked like them. And for the most part, talked like them. But he said, it's not right for you to continue to hate your brother. Then Jesus says, you have heard that it was said of old, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemy and pray for him. Jesus says, if you're only good to those who are good to you, how are you any different than the Gentiles? How are you different than anybody else in the world? There is something different. If you're going to be a follower of Jesus, that you love 
everybody, even your enemy, and you pray for him. And you know it might even cost you your life. It cost Jesus his life, didn't it? It cost Jesus his life to love on this world. He is the light of the world that brings grace. He is the light of the world that brings the goodness that we get to experience. Because he doesn't turn the world upside down. The world is already upside down. He turns the world right side up. Because he tells us how to change the world and to shine that light. It's when we stop slandering one another. When we stop gossiping against one another. When we stop envying and coveting what our neighbor has and we're mad because our neighbor has it and we don't have it. It's when we stop giving in to sexual immorality in our lives because it tears down the relationships. It tears down our hearts and our souls and our spirits. It's when we decide to stop being violent, to stop believing that violence is the answer to solving a disagreement with the person who's standing in front of me. Jesus said, turn the other cheek. Jesus allowed those who were before him to crucify him. And as he was crucified up there and they're making fun of him, what did he say? He lifted up his voice to heaven and he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They don't know what they're doing. They believe that darkness and evil and wickedness is the way to make things right. They believe that that kind of power is what's going to change the world. And Jesus is on the cross allowing them to crucify him and he's praying for them. The high priest is setting an example for all of his followers to follow. Pray for them that persecute you. There's a different way of grace that changes the world. What is it about Jesus that makes you want to follow him? What is it about Jesus that makes you want to follow him? Is it not his love? Is it not his passion and his commitment to loving all of us even though we have sinned and fallen so short of the honor and the glory? Isn't that true? It's his love that inspires us to be better. It is his love that motivates us to stop the behaviors that are destructive in our lives and that are destructive of the relationships that we have. John says in verse 16, And from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. The law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. It's hard, if not impossible, to legislate morality. You agree with that? It is hard, if not impossible, to legislate morality. But if there are laws or there are examples and there are principles on why we should love one another and the kind of world that that kind of love creates, what is the motivation for us to live into that? It's love, right? It goes right back to Jeremiah chapter 31, 31 through 34, when he says, I'm going to make a new covenant. And that new covenant is going to be on their minds and in their hearts, meaning you'll know what it is. But also, you'll love it. Because principles that you love and morality that you love are things that are not going to be burdensome to you or to me to participate in. But they're going to be easy for us because we love them because of what they do. Because it promotes life. It promotes grace. It promotes goodness. It promotes faithfulness. It promotes holiness. Those are the kinds of things that inspire us. Who wants to live in a dark world where there's pain and where there's suffering and where there's heartache and where there's murder 
and there's atrocities and there's war. Who wants to live in that kind of world? Does anybody in here want to live in that kind of world? Or would we rather live in the world that Jesus has called us to live in, in the way that he has called us to live? He's given his life upon the cross as an example for us so that we would have the confidence and the clear conscience to be able to live in accordance with loving one another. Jesus is the light of God's grace that has come into this world. Amen? The law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus. Jesus really is the answer to all of the problems that we have in this world. God gave us dominion over this world, and we ruined that. We are the ones who have made a mess of this world. What Jesus comes to us and asks us is this. I gave you dominion over the world and you've made it a mess. And you keep trying and you keep failing, but you can't solve the problems of the world. He asks us, will you willingly give that dominion Back over to me. Will you give the dominion that I gave you at the creation of the world? Will you give it back to me? Will you surrender to me as Lord and a king and God? Will you give it up for me? You can't make the world peaceful and gracious and loving on your own. The more control that you have over this world the more you ruin it. Will you give that dominion back over to me? Jesus is the light of God's grace. Would you, will you, give your dominion that God has given you back over to him? Would you give it to him today? Would you surrender it to him and say, you know what, God, I have made a mess of my life. Humanity has made a mess of this world. And we can't solve the answers. But your grace and your mercy can. And I love you and I believe in what you have done for me upon the cross. This morning, if you are willing to surrender your life to Jesus, to surrender to the light of the grace that he has given us, please do so this morning. Jesus invites you. His invitation is always for us as Christians To live into the promise and to live up to what he has called us to and to repent when we fall short as Christians of that. If you've not surrendered your life to Christ, this morning is the time to do it because tomorrow may not come. Would you surrender your dominion back over to Jesus so that the light of his grace can shine in your life and chase the darkness in your life away?